Welcome you all to the next lecture in our anthropology series. Uh, so we were doing culture personality school. We have already covered almost all the thinkers. Today we are going to do Ralph Linton and Cora Du Bois, and today we'll complete the culture personality school itself. Uh, so yes, let's get started. So yesterday we had uh, done about uh, Abraham Kahneder. So one of the person who was a co-founder of that basic personality type school, which was, uh, you know, the basic personality type, it was given by Carnider and Ralph Linton. Okay, so he was also one of the co-founders of that. Plus, he also gave a uh, a concept of core periphery hypothesis, which we are going to do today, right? So. Just if I have to give you a background of what he uh, his theory was all about, so he gave the concept of cultural background of personality. Now just uh, try to understand. Basically, this core uh, hypothesis. What was that? If I have to draw a diagram, I would say that this is how. he was trying to explain the core periphery hypothesis for example if we take this as the core and this as the periphery this as the periphery so his theory was that there if if we consider this the whole white thing the whole white circle as a core Uh, sorry as a as a culture right so a culture would be uh, made up of two things core and periphery so what core and periphery were basically it was further divided into two two things i'll just write it down here culture was divided into two parts one was the overt culture and covert culture covert is something which is you know covered and you can't see and overt would be something which which you are able to uh, you know like see covert would be covered hidden and overt would be something which is visible to you right so covert me uh, overt he gave two further classifications ki covert me jaise culture hota hai culture is material and non material aspects basically right something which is visible to you material aspects like buildings right buildings houses artifacts these would be things that are visible to you right and non material aspect so non material aspect ko usne he divided in two parts one was kinesthetics kinesthetics and then the core belief system or core belief value system i'll just write it here value system he divided it like that okay so yes now let's get start with it see usne bola the culture can be divided into two parts that is the core and the periphery that means certain things in a culture are those things which are very dear to you which are very you are emotionally inclined with and some things which are there as a part of your culture but then they are not so integral part of the culture but they are integral but then they are not so important they are like relatively unimportant things and those unimportant things would be the material things theek hai na that means buildings artifacts tools uh, these these things these things are not the core philosophy of your culture and then the kinesthetics in kinesthetics you can say uh you can say your behavior would make a part of the kinesthetics right so kinesthetics me kya ho jayega your behavior that is even the behavior that is visible for example uh you are a uh, you know a calm person or you are a aggressive person you are a violent person this kind of a behavior which is uh, visible at the at the superficial level also was made part of the overt culture overt ho gaya which is visible right covert me he said these would be the core value system what would this be this would find the covert uh, culture ka jo part hai na covert culture would be the 
core value system that means these are those beliefs values moral standards that are very dear to you that are difficult to change and that form the very basis of the culture so now how he said ki this is related to personality is that he was saying these core aspects of culture that is the beliefs the morals the values that are so dear and internalized to you that it it has a role to play on your personality type so this plays an important role on your personality right so this was what his core periphery hypothesis was that the periphery things that is the peripheral things the material the kinesthetical part the behavior jo superficially humko dikhta hai anger uh, uh, love affection that is not we are talking about the core things that is the core beliefs jaise ki uh, we could believe that india mates vasudev kutumbakam that means we we uh, you know uh, hum apne we are hospitable people or we are secular people they are the core aspects of our culture they are difficult to change anything at the periphery can be changed that can be accepted because they are not so important to us and this core part of the culture forms the personality type or it has an impact on the personality okay so now let's see now in uh, co-founder and all of that is fine so now this core hy- periphery hy- hypothesis was important in the social change i'll tell you how uh, first let's finish the core hypo uh, core periphery hypothesis he says even culture has a personality that means the core part of the culture that forms the personality of the culture so whatever you have in the core part of it that would be the personality of that culture theek hai and it is abstract that means it is imagination because obviously you cannot see it right whatever is there at the core that means whatever is the co- core part of it you can't see it that is a that is something which is in the imagination that is something which is in the in the minds of people and there is uh, where the psychological aspect of culture comes in right so psychology uh you know that is how personality psychology is related with the culture because it is something which is very very uh, uh in the imagination core things are not visible that means wo psychology mein hai and that forms the philosophy of culture the personality of culture theek hai right so now uh, how it is uh, concerned with the social change also i'll tell you see for example if you have to bring any change at the periphery you will be able to bring that change very easily because periphery pe there is not uh, people are not emotionally very attached to it so if you have to change anything you can change it very easily right for example we must have been using uh, hum log originally uh, in our uh, old times ghade ka pani peete the right so today if anybody wants to have uh, ghade ka pani they will have it for its scientific reasons right not for any uh, any cultural reasons right ki hum ghade ka pani peete the today also we will have that that is today we are doing it for scientific reasons but then new technologies like aquaguard ro has also come in and we have accepted those things so anything which is at the peripheral part of it it is easier to change but कोर को हिलाना कोर को चेंज करना इट्स इट्स टफ टू चेंज द कोर बिकॉज कोर हैज अ सेंटिमेंटल वैल्यू ठीक है दैट इज वाई दैट इज वाई यू कैन से द द थिंग्स लाइक कास्ट यू नो कास्ट की वजह से द द इश्यूज ऑफ अनटचेबिलिटी यू कैन से अनटचेबिलिटी देन यू कैन से द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सती एट वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ठीक है or you can say any other uh, any other thing which was the the which has got ingrained in the core aspect of it is becomes difficult to change right caste ke liye dr b r ambedkar fought a lot of uh, a very long battle right similarly raj ram mohan rao and many other people for sati theek hai so because they had they had ingrained itself in the core core of the the culture so then it becomes difficult to change but then if you have to have to change it is important uh ki you start from the periphery because if you if you go and attack attack the core first 
then you are going to uh, get it a lot difficult to uh, actually bring about the social change so agar if you want to bring social change what you should do is you should first start from the periphery and then go to the core theek hai because if you directly directly uh, affect or attack the core it is difficult to change and 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 it will further disintegrate it was it will disintegrate the whole culture why it will disintegrate the whole culture because culture ka whole philosophy is contained in the core aspect of it so if you directly attack the core you are going to disintegrate the whole culture so this was the theory that was uh, put about by uh, ralph linton okay so we have talked about the overt culture we have talked about the core covert culture which is the psychological aspect that means it's hidden right it is hidden it is not visible right and uh, he also called the ruth benedict's culture pattern and complex as core because she was also talking about uh, cultural patterns which make cultural complexes na so he called this culture complex is actually the core philosophy of the culture right so he talked about that and how core affected culture you know if if you attack the core how it gets disintegrated we have talked about that right but but changes at the periphery are accepted and the resistance to change at periphery is a lot lesser just for example when british also came to india right whatever changes they brought at the core were uh, accepted but the changes for example the mutiny of 1857 when there was an attack on the core principles like for example the 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 cartridge that they had to you know uh, bite off from the uh, the mouth right it had both matlab it was believed that it had both uh, you know some part of pig and beef right so it was not accepted by either religions hindu or muslims right so if you attack the core parts of the thing then then the culture is going to disintegrate there is bound to be conflict but periphery pe it is accepted right so this is uh, we have studied and this was another book that he had written the tree of culture but here he had given a more evolutionary perspective of evolutionary perspective of cultures how the human civilizations have evolved and all of that so this i have just uh, shared with you one other book that ralph linton wrote the tree of culture but this was not uh, you know uh, as such uh, uh, you know uh, related to the culture personality school or the work of ralph, ralph linton in culture personality school right but in a way if we have to analyze or evaluate the work in, of uh, ralph linton culture personality school we can say that he and many others introduced psychodynamism that means how behavior changes with the change in culture because iska bahut zyada application social change pe hai so what they said basically if you have to social if you have to bring about a social change start it from the periphery don't attack the core first because that is going to integrate the whole culture so social uh, ch- uh, change may uh, inki theory is very important and then he uh, introduced a psychodynamism aspect ki how the behavior would change if the culture changes right because the culture the core of the culture which has the philosophy Uh, of the culture and which makes the personality type of individuals if you have to change then you have to change the culture itself right because culture has a lot of uh, uh, influence on the personality type of, of people living in that culture so i hope i have uh, cleared myself in this uh, topic so let's move further with cora du bois and she would be the last person in our culture personality school so she gave uh, two very important things i'll just write it here one was the so one was the uh, projective technique and one was model personality so this was uh, this was her two very important uh, contributions so projective techniques are basically you can say they are uh, certain clinical uh, uh interviews matlab uh, with the help of certain techniques you know you try and get to a conclusion for example you give very complex complex stimulus 
or complex situations you can say to people and they are made to react in those uh, very hypothetical complex situations okay so this this again tries to bring out their personality basically it's a it's a it's a it's a test of your psychology that means how you are going to behave in that for example when we do the uh, gs paper 4 ethics ka paper uh, there is a whole section where you are de- you are dealing with ethical dilemmas what is that that is trying and read your read your personality uh, it's 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 how you you behave your psychology right so it's it's the similar kind of thing where you are given complex stimulus you are made to react on it and based on that your psychology and your personality type is developed okay so this was another very uh, you know uh, integrating the psychological aspects to study of culture and society so again a very fresh take on how we study cultures and societies around the world and then came up with the model personality this model personality is very uh, you can say similar to the basic personality of abram kanida and also she was uh, she was very influenced by abram kanida so that is why she kind of defended her work also theek hai and uh, and in and used ruth benedict's evidences also because when when cora du bois came up with these uh, very new uh, uh, mother techniques to study uh, the the people or the cultures at large it was roughly the time of world war when uh, you know going to the fields and having the first hand information was very tough okay but yet there was a need to know the the you can say an enemy's psychological profile especially at the time when america was at war with japanese it was very important to understand how japanese used to uh, behave because they never came like a prisoner of war they would they would commit suicide but never become a prisoner of war so studying their personality from the first hand uh, by t- taking them as prisoners of war was not possible so what uh, cora du bois did was she took up the the ruth benedict's works the life histories or the autobiographies or the the very important book that she wrote the chrysanthemum and the sword where she had the documented japanese character right so she took that work she further did her own studies on that and then came with a national character of japanese further she worked uh, in allor of indonesia theek hai and collected data and and tried to show uh, their personality type in the book the people of allor the the name of book was the people of allor okay so she did these two studies theek hai uh, she did uh, she took ruth benedict's uh, uh, material she did the study of national character of japanese as well as people of allor she had uh, worked there she had collected the data and what she did after that was na when she took this uh, data na allor allor allor's culture ka data she took and what she uh, did na she created a, a a basic type of personality in her own way and then she gave this data to three different scholars one was uh, william schmidt then there was uh, uh, abram kanader kardiner and one i don't remember guys i'm so sorry and this is not even important ki who were the three scholars who, who she gave the data to that's not important just to because these two we have studied so that is why i was telling you the names also so she gave these data to these people and they they did not know whose data is it who uh, matlab she didn't mention the name as allories of indonesia nothing like that she they she had just given the data uh, in a very uh, you know you can say covert manner nothing was nothing more than the data was re- revealed to them and then they were made to create a basic personality or what what she called it a model personality of those people right and it was very very fascinating to know that all three of them 
came to a you know similar kind of conclusion which means that all three of them concluded that they had a similar kind of a personality type obviously she did not disregard the fact that there is diversity there is uh, individual individuality in people all of that is there she did not say that people are going to be a prototype of each other it is not like that of course she uh, regarded the fact that people are going to be very different there there is individualism to people all of that is there but then there is a model personality to people model personality is what model personality is the statistically most certain personality that means if we all are indians theek hai we all have our own individuality we all are very different to each other for example some might be introverts some might be extroverts some might be more calm people some might be hyperactive people but this is not the personality type we are talking about a personality type like for example indians are largely tolerant people right or we are largely secular people or we are largely uh, you can say whatever our personalities are so a personality which is statistically more certain in the fact that it is a uh, somewhere it is going to be there in that uh, in the in the people of that culture right so that is what it said so it said model personality was based on psychic unity and obviously enculturation ki obviously uh, you are enculturated in in a way theek hai na enculturation right enculturation so in a way we are all reared up in a way we have all uh known our civilizational story so it has a huge impact on us no matter what the reason is but we all have certain similar characteristics which she called as model personality and then there will be variations which she did not disregard right and then this technique of studying cultures from afar studying cultures from distance studying cultures at far or from a distance was then used by many others like g foster who studied the personality type of peasants or oscar lewis he he tried to study the uh, prisoners of war in mexico or the martial races of india the rajputs were studied using this technique only so um, a lot of uh, people after that used this technique of studying cultures at far or using these kind of uh, you know projective techniques to uh, study so in a th- theoretical way you you won't say that uh, she contributed much but then she contributed uh, in the method methodological way that means she come up came up with a lot of new techniques right and then the whole culture personality school they uh, you know adopted uh, psychological principles with anthropology which made it a lot more holistic then a new f- feminist perspective came in that was also important and they they uh, use certain cutting edge techniques like clinical interviews life history visual anthropology visual anthropology margaret mead ne use kiya tha right clinical inter, uh, interviews corrado boys ne use kiya tha so methodologically also very superior used certain new techniques then countered racism and equalitical uh, equality principles because she uh, for example corrado boys she said there is psychic unity but didn't disregard the individuality of people right so isse kya hua racism they try to say because ki there are differences in people and there are similarities that means nobody is inferior or superior people are product of their cultures because personality is a lot developed based on the culture that they live in so wahan se inferior superior ka jo concept hai na unko inhone refute kar diya because people are product of their culture and that is why inferior superior ki baat hi nahi aati theek hai so they countered racism they talked about equality and the focus was a lot individual rather than the rather than creating any universal law because basically they uh, used individual psychology or psychology of people around the world with culture so they were not giving any pan world hypothesis or universal laws but they were talking about more on the individual level right 
सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट कल्चर पर्सनैलिटी स्कूल आई होप यू गाइज हैव लाइक दिस लेक्चर एंड अदर लेक्चर्स एज वेल सो इफ यू डेट गाइज प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू मोरो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट स्कूल एंड येस गाइज थैंक यू सो मच